So I don't know how well this is going to go, but I'm going to try to talk a little bit about analog and digital communication. I know that the conversation has come up in a couple of different contexts here, and some people have even suggested that there might be some sense in which the human experience of freedom is in some way related to digital forms of information. And I, I guess I want to support that and see if I can't clarify that just a little bit. I think one of the ways to think about the difference between analog and digital communication is to realize that you know all kinds of organisms use both kinds of communication to some degree, but only humans have what are sometimes called second-order digitalizations. By second-order digitalizations, I mean both discrete denotative words that are used in syntactical combinations with other words, but also peculiar uses of words such as not, or this, or I. There's certain words that can be used in combination with other words that don't really seem to be just a word per se. It's more like a metacommunicative rule for understanding both ourselves and the world uh, in certain ways. And I want to see if I can clarify that uh, with a whole bunch of examples. Now, one way to clarify the distinction between uh, analog and digital communication is to say that at the level of analog communication there really is no not. There's withdrawal or there's refusal but there is no syntactical statement of what is not the case. Now I think you know one way to clarify that even further is that at the level of analog, all you have is continuous, contiguous relation states. I mean, the relation states simply are what they are, and the values are always those values nested right next to neighboring values. You don't have abstract, free-floating values the way you can in digital communication. Digital communication is actually of a higher order of abstraction than analog communication. Whereas analog communication deals with continuums and shadings of continuums, digital communication proposes on a higher order of abstraction either or oppositions, sort of characters, what would you say, uh, selected oppositional characteristics that then can be seen as this one or that, right? We, we pull those out of what are ongoing continuities. Uh, this can be seen in countless, countless uh, cases. Now imagine a stereo volume knob where some person comes into a room and imagine that there's no markings on the st stereo volume knob. Some person adds more sound, some person and then they can add less sound. At each point when they're adding more sound or less sound, the sound is always continuous and contiguous with the neighboring sound values. It's one of the basic properties of uh, analogic communication. Now, there's no way to have non-sound. I mean, you can turn it all the way down, but as the sound's going on, it just has continuous values. Some person could turn it up, now another can person could turn it down, and another person could turn it up, another person could turn it down. But until one of them would say, hey, that's loud, or hey, that's not quiet enough, there's just analogic communication there. But once someone speaks and they introduce an either-or category, now, sort of like at a meta level to the continuous, contiguous values that were there, they propose an either-or opposition and they select from there. You can see this, as I say, in, in lots of different cases where, you know, if you think of even a wave crest, a wave will go on like this and now the wave will be an analog and it will be continuous, but there will be a crest and a trough. When you name the crest and the trough, you're introducing boundaries, a kind of digitalization that separates one crest from another. And you have to have the, you know, the periodicity of a wave gets marked by digitalizations of what are analog continuums. The same could be said of the visible uh, light. Uh, spectrum. The visible light spectrum is in fact a rich spectrum, but when we label it things like red, or, you know, Roy G. Biv, when we say it's red, orange, blue, green, indigo, and violet, we're then introducing categories atop that. 
look at the changing of the seasons. The changing of the seasons is just an ongoing register of analogic information. But when we call it spring, summer, winter, fall, it's on a second order of abstraction, atop of those ongoing continuous and contiguous differences, we introduce these distinct things called spring, summer, winter, fall. It was just so funny, right? I think this is why people say, oh boy, spring's coming early this year, or fall's earlier, S summer seems longer. It, there does seem to be a an odd problem of various kinds of paradoxes, various kinds of struggles go on when you go from analog or to digital, right? I mean, I think there's, there's countless cases of this. Try to think of some of these cases where if you're out watching a sporting event and some, at least think of a baseball game, if some person throws the ball, the ball just is wherever it is. But when the umpire calls it a ball or a strike, that's a digitalization of that analogic uh, relation state. The geographical land masses that make up the U.S., all of the, the different mountain ranges and all of the different continuities that can be found throughout the you know, the entire globe, to tell you the truth, but if you just do the U.S., that's, again, analogic, but then the boundaries between the states, when we say, okay, well, here is this state and this is the, this state, or the boundaries between countries, those are digitalizations of, of what amount to be analogic relations. The rotation of the, the earth is a kind of ongoing relation state of continuous, contiguous differences. That's all it is. But then we introduce distinctions like day and night. Now, when does it become day and it's no longer night? Take my arm here. You know, my, my arm has various characteristics, but when I use language to say, well, I mean my wrist and not my forearm, I'm introducing boundaries and separating off what's really just continuous. Like, in the world of analogic communication, you can't show that you're one thing and the world is something else. It's only with the digital aspects of speech, and in particular with the use of the word not, that you can say that you're one thing and then the world is something else. Now, this probably sounds a little bit crazy, but the word not is not even a word. And the word not is not even a word. The word not is actually a meta-communicative rule for introducing boundaries into continuums. And that's sort of what I just showed you, right? The, the fact that I can take what are continuums and introduce boundaries where there aren't boundaries, it shows this not being used meta-communicatively. Right? It's a digitalization of analogic relations. Now, here's try to think of some different ways to think about some of the, the differences or relationships between analog and digital communication. One is that analog communication is what we can hear when we listen to a foreign tongue. So if I'm traveling abroad and I listen to people speaking in a foreign language, all I can hear is the analogic sound qualities. I can't tell when one word begins or another word ends. Uh, I, I certainly can't tell the beginning or ending of sentences. Now, maybe I can tell that there's silences and there's, there's gaps or pauses, but I don't know if the person's looking for yet another word. And, you know, even I think if people are familiar with Daniel Dennett's work, you know, that they've done studies where they've listened to the acoustical out you know, the, the acoustical output displayed on a, and graphically when people speak and the areas that have the lowest amount of sound, those don't line up to the spaces between words. Oftentimes, the amounts of uh, smallest sound output are actually within a given word. Uh, so again, it, it's not as if the gaps or the the spaces that we hear within the sounds of a foreign tongue are lining up to the words. Instead, we hear the continuous, contiguous sounds, and then on a second order, we overimpose a digitalization upon those sounds, which is the recognizing of those words as the discrete words they are. Um, when, you, when you know the, the, the language, you can hear the discrete words there. That is the digitalization of it. Now, 
I think some of this is related to animal human uh, communication, dog human communication. The dog understands the analogic aspects of the communication. The dog is able to understand the sound, the tone, the pitch, the values, all of those things that are continuous and contiguous. The dog can't entertain in a cool reflection either or propositions that are given by way of the not. Right? I mean the dog, if you if you go up to your dog, right, and you, first off, just listen to the sound of your voice. If you say to your dog, you're such a good, good dog, the dog is scared of you. The dog can, it can see that you're sounding very angry in the same way that if you go, oh, look, you're a stupid little dog who likes to eat your own poop and lick yourself, the dog is happy. He hears your voice and he wags his tail. He doesn't hear that you're making fun of them by the what you say. Now, maybe he can hear it in the tone of your voice, uh, but the, the dog itself doesn't deal with the either or and the is not. The dog just deals with the continuous contiguous relation states that are kind of organismal goal seeking around it in its world. The, you know, tr try to go up to your dog and say to your dog, now you can either go outside or you can have a treat, but you can't have both. See, the dog doesn't seem to understand digital signs as either or syntactical options. It doesn't think about items in multiple logical types. I mean, I, see, I think this issue of logical typing is, is also so crucial that digital communication is characterized by having multiple logical types. So this right here, I can call both a pen, an object, a piece of garbage, and a tool, and I can also say that it's not something that I've held in my hand yet today. Now, in all of those cases, I'm treating this continuous, contiguous set of relation states, and even this, like I'm supposedly pointing to a thing that I'm holding, but the thing that I'm holding is sort of being bound by the frame of the camera. The camera provides somewhat of a digital uh, framework for making it seem like there is this thing here, but the thing is actually part of the continuous, contiguous relation states that are connected to me, to this room, this room is connected to this house, this house is connected to this neighborhood, this neighborhood to the state, the state to the world. I mean, at the level of the analog, there is no not that introduces the boundary that says that I'm one thing and the rest of absolutely everything else is something else. Uh, there are differences to be sure. We want to understand that the world of analog is the world of differences. The world of uh, the digital is the world of distinctions. When we're talking about distinctions, we're talking about either this or that has sets within sets, and it really does allow for the use of either or classifications and this fascinating use of the word not as a syntactical word, right? It's a word that's used in combination with other words, and it's a word that changes the level of abstraction. It's a meta-communicative rule for introducing boundaries in what otherwise are just continuums. Now, I think this is so crucial for what we mean by the experience of human freedom. I think human experiences of freedom have been made possible because digital communication allows us to dwell in either or options where at the level of the analog there only simply is whatever is the case. See, I think there are, there are so many try to I think this is one of the struggles that people have in their relationships. See, a relationship is an ongoing relationship. Uh, it's a set of relation states at the nonverbal level of, of closeness, of nearness, of touch, of non-touch, of amounts of touch, of how much touch. But as soon as you have some contract that says you are or are not a couple, when you've become an us officially, you've kind of digitalized ongoing relation states. There's an infinity of ways to talk about this, and I realize that I could, we could just talk about it at length. Uh, I guess... What I will do is I'll see if I can post at the end of this video a kind of summary of some of the things that I've said, and uh, people can maybe look at that and think more about this. And uh, Okay, hope everyone's having a good day. Take care. Bye.